Welcome back to What A Man's Life Mission. Today, I've got Matt Cross on from uh, 33 Secrets. Uh, this guy's a legend. He's an established player in the game. And so I thought I would get him on to, to see Matt Cross's uh, One Man's Life Mission. So welcome to the show. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So uh, like, the, like the play you are, you are in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> been here, been coming here a lot lately, especially with the COVID, the COVID so, situation. Yeah. So you're living, eating, and you know, it's, it's just your, uh, this is just your life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw your message last night and, um, cause I was on the live stream. I guess you caught my live stream, right? I was out yes. on the strip. Yeah. So yeah, I, I didn't see your message there, but you, you hit me up on Instagram and I was like, yes. oh, okay, cool. Yes. Yeah. I have, I have not slept yet since last night. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I saw you, I saw you, you're like on the live stream and you're like, might as well do a few approaches, right? <laughs> right, right <laughs> In live stream. Um, yeah. yeah. But running, running through the casino without a mask on trying to pick up. <laughs> yeah. Man. That and live streaming at the same time. So it's like your concentration is in your focus is like in three yeah. different places. You know? Yeah, that's like that's like a different type of infield. It's like, can I get your number? Oh, just ignore the live yeah, stream. Ignore the live stream. <laughs> like, yeah, that would have been difficult as well. But yeah, so uh, for you guys at home, this guy literally lives games. So, um, and I, I don't think I need to um, uh, censor my terminology. So yeah, this should should be a better one. But the whole purpose of this is to get your life's mission. We go right back to the very beginning. We find out what you were like when you grew up, high school, all the way through to uh, player Matt Cross. <laughs> so uh, if you don't mind, let's go right back to the very beginning that you can remember where you started thinking about girls, I guess, or wherever yeah. you want to start. Okay, let's go way back. Yeah. Um, okay, so when I was growing up, uh, when I was in high school, uh, there was a club downtown. I grew up in San Francisco, California. So there was a very popular club at the time called the Palladium. It was off Broadway. Uh, now it's a hustler club, but that was basically the Palladium. Uh, back in the day, I was in high school and I remember creating a fake ID so I could get into the Palladium because that's where all the hot girls wow. would go. Yeah. So, um, back when I was 16 and most of my peers were going to like school dances and school functions, um, I was taking my fake ID and going to the Palladium like three or four times per week. Uh, the bouncers got to know me so they wouldn't like, you know, they wouldn't, uh, I don't know if they ever realized how old I was, but I was 16 at the time. So I was going to this uh, nightclub that had women who were 21 and up. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was, uh, it was a fun time. And I think being 16 years old and not really having experienced rejection yet, I was able to kind of see like, um, I was able to just kind of be myself and not worry about what I said or if it was stupid because at that age, I mean, most of the things you say are just, you don't care. So yeah, um, yeah and you don't really care about the social repercussions and um so I was able to talk to a lot of girls back then that were much older than me that were, you know, I mean, not that much older. They were probably in their 20s at the time. So mm -hmm. at the time, I seemed older. But uh, that's where I really started cutting my teeth on game was at the Palladium when I was in high school. And then uh, a few other clubs popped up after that. And I was in college, like DV8, very popular at the time. People from San Francisco will know, what, know these clubs that I'm mentioning. Uh, there was DV8. There was 1015 Folsom. So basically for this 10 year span, I was going basically clubbing for 10 years straight, um, three to four wow. times per week. Yeah, that's where I really cut my teeth on game and actually didn't, I, the first time I ever remember doing a day, like a day game approach wasn't until I was uh, probably about like 26 years old. This is like mid nineties. Um, that was the first time I did that. And that was an eye opener in itself, but uh, mm that's where i started and so uh, at 18 at 18 you guys finished high school right is that the yes. same same as in yeah, australia yeah. Mm. oh yeah so you so you were still living at home and uh, <laughs> at 18 what happened at 18 when you left high school uh, work wise were you just staying at home just working part time uh, 
Yeah, so uh, after high school, I went on to college um, and I started, uh, I started, I, I was still going nightclubbing, but I had a girlfriend in college and I actually met her through Cold Approach. Um, I don't know if you know this, but I've mentioned this on my channel, like every single girlfriend I've ever had in my entire life, I've met through a Cold Approach. I, I've Ooh. never, yeah, I've never had a single girlfriend that I met through my social circle just because there were never really any cute girls in my social circle. So that's why I was constantly going out, trying to meet mm. new people. Um, yeah, I just never had these type of girls in my social circle. Um, what, were you, what were you like in uh, high school? So uh, when did you first uh, pick up a girl in high school? Or like, when did you first, like, if I can say sleep with a girl or whatever, lose your virginity? Oh, okay, like, like the first time I had sex? Like, we're going right back, right back. Yeah. Okay, so if we go back even further, uh, yeah. my high school, yeah, so my high school girlfriend, uh, she went to a neighboring high school. She didn't go to mine, but I had, she used to work at this Burger King in Daly City, and so I used to go into this Burger King, and I saw her working there, and uh, I literally just, like, one day I saw her, and I just started talking to her, and I'm like, oh, I go to this high school, and I'm like, let me get your phone number, and um, I called her, and we went out. She became my girlfriend, and that we that that relationship went for at least uh, a couple of years and uh so she was my first i was like i think i was like 17 i on my birthday when i lost my virginity so. oh okay and, and yeah. what year was that oh my god you really want to know <laughs> yeah yeah of course uh that was 1988 1988 yep 1988 wow how 1988. old are you now if I can ask. Uh, right now, I am in, what did I just turn? Uh, 47, 48. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You don't look it. You don't oh, look it. You. Do you dye your hair or something? <laughs> not at all. Not at all. What I have like hell? one or two. Yeah, I have like one or two gray hairs, but uh, that's pretty much it. I think it's just good genes because my dad, right? My dad, he literally didn't get... I can't remember, but like he was probably in his 60s before I noticed him having gray hair. So oh, wow. he has like really good genes. And yeah, I'm fortunate. I still have like a full head of hair and I don't have to dye it or anything like that. But uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that salt and pepper look. <laughs> like with getting oh, a little gray. Trust me, it, it doesn't help the results at all. They, they'll, be <laughs> look, they'll be looking you in the eye and then yeah. you'll notice every now and then they'll do this. They'll go, and they'll be looking at this. I, oh no! I, I dye it. I dye my. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I'd salt and pepper. That's a myth. It doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. at some point, I'll probably dye it. I don't know. I don't think I have to worry for another at least another five years or so. Wow. If I follow my dad's traje trajectory, yeah. Gee, no, that's that's amazing. Uh, so 1988. Wow. So um, yeah. no phones. Uh, if you had to get in contact with her, you had to get through, I guess, the, the, whoever guarded the, the landline phone at the household. You have to Correct. get through them. Yeah, um, and I really miss those times, too, before we had social media, before we had smartphones, before we had um, mainstream internet, because uh, a lot of guys, like especially younger guys who I get will ask me, what was it like before all of this? You know, cause they didn't really experience that time, you know? Yep. Um, hmm. Yeah. I tell them it was, it was all you, all, all game really required back then was having the courage to talk to the girl. Yeah. Just not come off socially awkward. And if she gave you her phone, home phone number, I mean, if she gave you her phone number, it was basically her home phone number. Yeah. And a lot of these girls had their own line. So, you know, I would say probably 75% of the time she had her own phone, her own actual phone in her room where the other 25% of the time it was like the house phone. And then you had to deal with her dad or her brother yeah, or her yeah. sister. And like, Hey, can I talk to, you know, Katie real quick? Yeah. Um, but when a girl gave you her phone number back, when she gave you her phone number back then, um, really it was just a matter of just like, establishing rapport then going on a date and most times that girl would become your girlfriend mm. um yeah if the girl you, you really wouldn't... wasn't interested she'd just give you a fake number so these days these girls don't give fake numbers they just give you their real number but back then if they really didn't like you they just give you a, a bogus number but uh, when they didn't it was pretty much on mm. 
And, and, and I guess at the moment we can send a text and we don't know if they've read the text. They don't even have to reply. Right. Hell, they might not ever reply. Uh, and right. I guess you can call them. And also what, what, what social media and, and online dating is doing now is uh, there would be a, a good looking girl. She would know her, her mate value instantly because she posts a photo on Instagram. Right. She's like, she could be, she could be a 10, but back yeah. in the day, she wouldn't get all this validation from greater society. No, she wouldn't even know. Yeah. Yeah. She had no uh, measuring stick to really know, it, you know, yeah. outside of the guys who would maybe cat call every once in a while. And even back then, more people were a little more reserved about doing that. Um, oddly yeah. enough. Yeah. Whereas these days, I mean, guys are a little more, I guess, just because of the, the culture we're living in now with social media and everyone having an opinion. Uh, but back then, most guys, most people were pretty reserved. And um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I was able to, I mean, most, I would say every single girlfriend I had back then was really attractive. And uh, these days, it would take a lot more game than what I did back then, which is just working up the courage to talk to them, trying not to look nervous in front of them. And even that would come off as, you know, endearing sometimes just being like, hey, there's this nervous guy who's trying to yeah. talk to me. I'm just going to give him my phone number. And then, you know, and, and back then, because you're calling the girl at home, you, the, the girl would literally stay on the phone with you, you know, three, four hours. Some of these girls, yeah. yeah, after I got their phone number, we would be on the phone all night. So there's like a lot of rapport being established. Yeah. And by the time we go on a date, it's almost like we're already together. Whereas these days, there's a lot of disconnect these days because of social media. So, um, so these days, it's, you know, there, it's just an entirely different type of game you have to work in order to pull that mm -hmm. off. Yeah, yeah, you have to keep innovating. It's constantly changing too. Even today, like tomorrow, it's going to be different. And uh, right. th that's kind of what you, you've had to do all these years then. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it, it's kept me young. It's kept me kind of alive in life, which is good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of my peers, and even like pickup artists, friends that I grew uh, that I gamed with just like 20 years ago that are married now, it's, they can't imagine coming back into this space and they're like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you're still out there. That's crazy. And yeah, it's mm. insane. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we, we've got a, we've got a real player here guys. Um, <laughs> uh, so you had it for two years. So about uh, you left, you went into college, you were studying and she, yeah. uh, I'm assuming, so you went, uh, your first year in the college, you were still studying and still with her. Um, yeah, we broke up like right before I, like right after I graduated high school. So okay. um, around that, yeah, it was around that summer that we broke up. The reason why we broke up was um, she had been talking about wanting to get married as soon as possible and have wow. a family and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, she was a really good girl, and uh, she ended up doing that. Like, the next guy she met after me, she literally married, had three kids, and she's been married to him since. So, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't surprised. Yeah, I mean. Did you did you see the meme? I, I posted this meme everywhere recently. It's uh, back in 1986, uh, Top Gun 1. And there's Tom Cruise and the lead actress, I forgot her name. Uh, Kelly uh, McGillan? Did you hear about that? And there's a photo of them side by side uh, now. And yeah. she looks like his mom. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe even some people could even say possibly his grandma. Right? Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 So, mm, so if, if, you're a, if you're a teenager or you're in your 20s at home watching this, are you going to get married that early? Maybe not. Probably not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. I don't suggest it. Whenever I get younger guys and like, hey, you know, should I get married now or knock up my girlfriend? I'm like, nah, I wouldn't do that. I, just, yeah. I think back in the day, they used to call their, uh, their wife the old lady. And now I understand why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you, went and, you went and studied something? Were you playing sports as well over there? Yeah, yeah. Not a big deal in, um, in the US to uh, study something and then play some sort of sport? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know like, how, how popular it is these days to do that. But I mean, back when I was growing up, I mean, that's basically what you did. And uh, 
that was an easier way to meet even more girls. Uh, so back when I was in high school, college, I played football, which, you know, basically American football. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, so in high school, I had access to, I, I just, whenever you played football in high school, you were automatically popular. So yeah, um, that gave me access to a lot of the, uh, I guess, better looking girls of my high school. Um, and also in college, played football there and um, ended up meeting my college girlfriend probably the very first week of school. Um, yeah, I just saw her like studying, sitting down studying, and I just approached her, walked up to her and just started chatting her up. And I mean, yeah, I think about that these days. I'm like, you know, would that, would that even be possible these days, you know, uh, without with just kind of like average game? And I had very average game back then. Um, mm -hmm. These days, I mean, these days, these girls would be on social media from the time they're like, what, seven, eight years old. And then so by the time they're 18 and in college, they would know what their value is. And they'd be like, I don't have to talk to this guy. I could, you yeah. know, I could meet a much, much better looking guy. Mm. And that, yeah. do you think because of that, uh, a lot of people are against old school game, but I, I tend to think that because women know their mate value these days, uh, mm. the good old fashioned neg might be of value. Dare I say it? Dare I say it? Am I allowed oh, to say God. that word? To this day, I mean, negs are probably still the most powerful weapon in my toolbox that I still <laughs> use. Um, I advise my students to do it. I mean, yeah. they're all playful negs. I mean, you're not trying to hurt the person, you know, uh, but, yeah. uh, mm. but um, it, it is just incredibly effective as far as just kind of bringing down the person's, uh, mm. you know, yeah. sense of yeah. Mm. Yeah, apparently it's taboo, but because if everyone knows what their mate value is and, and they're like, well, what am I doing speaking to you? It's like, well, right. try, and try to uh, bring them down to your level. Um, yeah. I actually, went to, I actually went to Asia where, you know, like if you're, you're a Western guy in Asia, you just kill it over there, right? Um, oh, totally. And uh, you can actually get on Tinder and just, you know, within hours have someone arrive at your front door. Um, and I, I would, uh, there was, there was one girl in particular that I met over there, uh, and she gave me so much attitude. It was like, she was negging me. She kept negging oh. me. And I was like, uh -huh. in my mind, I thought maybe she is more valuable than I thought, even though I've got a surplus of a billion girls just literally at my disposal right now, I can go to a club and literally pull five times if I wanted to, it doesn't matter. But I was like, hey, right. there's something about this girl. And then I started thinking, let's reverse engineer that. Well, maybe I should neg back in a Western country. That's where I came to yeah. that conclusion. Mm. Okay. Nice. Nice. That's, yeah, it's always funny when girls neg. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm, well, they have a shot at you. So, um, yeah. uh, so uh, you went to college, you were playing football. Uh, right. Did anything notable happen while you were there? I'm just going to plug my laptop in, but keep sure, going. Sure. I'm right here. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, in college, basically, uh, I had my college girlfriend. Who, for we dated pretty much almost the entire time that I was in school, and then I think it was probably my junior year in college or end of my junior year. Uh, I wanted to end it. Uh, and she was another one where she was like, I want to get married. I want to have kids. And where is this going? Um, oh, wow. And I told her, yeah, I told her that I wanted to enjoy my last couple of years in college and I wanted to party and I wanted to be free and I wanted to be single. And I remember she literally said no. And I'm like, what do you mean? No, I'm trying to break up with you. She's like, no. And I'm like, no, you're not gonna let me break up with you. And she's like, yeah, no, we're not breaking up. And I told her, I remember saying, well, if we don't, if you don't let me go, I'm just going to end up cheating on you. Is that really what you want? You know, and uh, she stayed with me. And then sure enough, I ended up cheating on her and she freaked out about it. And then she finally broke up with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, my last couple of years in college were pretty fun because I, I dated a lot of girls on campus. Um, I was still going clubbing. So I was dating girls that I was meeting through the clubs. Uh, I remember like having a, even at that time, I had anywhere between a five, seven, eight girl dating rotation. 
and my guy friends couldn't believe it. Actually, back then, most guys were blue pill. So most of my closest guy friends were shaming me. They were trying to hate on me. Or they were like, literally, I had one guy who was supposed to be my best friend. He called like each of these girls to tell them that I was seeing, oh, her, her, and her. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, come on, dude, are you serious? But uh, yeah, that, I mean, I'm these- gonna, I'm gonna stop you right there. For the guys at home, <laughs> when you're getting a lot of hate from even your best friends, that's when you know you're a player. When all of your, yeah. when all of your buddies are giving you a pat on the back going, oh, you're a real player, and they actually, be, they, they're actually loving what you're doing, it means you're not a player. When people are hating on you, that's when you're a fucking player. And um, uh, there's a few guys out there that don't fully understand that. But when I heard that, I'm like, oh, when your best friend is literally trying to sabotage you, that oh. means that you're on the level. That means that you got game. Uh, that's a real okay. sign um, uh, for guys at home that, yeah, just want to hear that. I just thought I'd throw that in there because it's, yeah. yeah no. so, so what happened after that? You, you, you had to start from scratch? <laughs> um, yeah, I, it was around that time that I stopped. Um, it was around that time. It was like mid nineties that I actually started going clubbing alone. I started going solo without them uh, just because they were all constantly either hating on me trying to sabotage me or, you know, just do like snotty little things that I'm like, why are you trying to help the girl? You don't even know her. I'm supposed to be your buddy. I'm your boy. Why aren't you on my side? You know? So it got to the point where um, they're like, Oh, you know, it's just, you know, you shouldn't treat women that way. And I'm like, what way? I'm just talking to them. You know, it's not like I was doing anything. Mm -hmm. I wasn't even nagging back then. I didn't know what a neg was. I was just trying to talk to the girl and I was trying to find a connection with her. Um, so I, I just started going out by myself around that time. I started doing solo game. And the first, the first few times I did it was pretty scary, not having like your guy friends around and, you know, and just uh, going out there by yourself, standing in this line for a club by yourself uh, while everybody is there with their friends or in large groups. Here you are by yourself and you kind of feel like a loser. Uh, but I got over that pretty quickly because I realized I'm like, wow, I could bounce from venue to venue to venue much quicker. I don't have to worry about these guys saying anything behind my back or sabotaging me. Mm. And I can just move around a lot quicker. And I noticed um, my skill level had increased dramatically at that point. My self-confidence, my self-awareness, um, my ability to kind of just ping back and forth with a girl if she would reject me or if she had something to say. So I constantly was coming up with new responses. And um, so it was actually a good experience. And a lot of guys to this day, when they ask me like, hey, should I go out solo? I, yeah, I'm like, yeah, dude, that's yeah. totally good. Mm. You know? How's your hearing? <laughs> How's, I, my what? How's your hearing? You having, oh, it's great. Yeah, do, do you wear earplugs or something when you go out? Oh, uh, oh, into the clubs. Uh, I probably should, but I don't. <laughs> okay. And your hearing's yeah. fine. Oh yeah, yeah. It's my sight right now that's starting to get a little blurry. <laughs> um, but I think most of that, I always had like really, uh, really great vision. I think most of that is just probably the last 10 years, like creating a business around this and constantly staring at a computer and doing video editing and just, wow. you know, staring at my cell phone and stuff like that. I don't think it's good for your eyes. So yeah, I try to take breaks from it. Yeah. So, uh, that was, so colleague, uh, did you use your degree and then go into whatever profession you were studying? Um, yeah, I did, but I mean, the degree never really helped. I mean, I ended up, I was one of the rare like American college students that actually went into the field that I studied. Um, so I studied business marketing in uh, college and then uh, I minored in psychology. And uh, after that, I, uh, I started working for a, corporate, a few corporations. But I mean, even as while I was in school and while I was working for these companies, I was always kind of cr creating like a side business or a side hustle. Even back then, I was trying to just wanting to free myself from the corporate world and do my own thing. So, um, so yeah. And, you know, lo and behold, I'm doing that today. I'm not working for a company anymore, but just for myself. Oh, okay. So, so at the moment we're up to about 93. 
1993, I believe. Oh, okay. I thought we were in like 96. 93. Well, not, well, I guess. Oh, okay. You're talking about college. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. After the degree. So yeah. 96 was when you finished the degree, was it? No, I finished around 93. You're correct. Okay. And then, then you went in. So for about three years, you were, uh, you were working, uh, you know, in marketing, you know, do, having. Oh, for those three years. Okay. So for those three years, um, I was trying to make it in football. So most of oh. what I was doing. Yeah, most of what I was doing at that time, I was playing semi-professional football for a few teams, and um, I was trying to get... What position? uh, I played quarterback. I played quarterback. No way. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so um, I was trying to get uh, tryouts and whatnot. Um, So during that time, I did never took a real job per se. I was at the time, what was I doing? Oh, I had a business buying and selling cards at the time. So I was buying and selling cards to not only help pay for school, but just help pay for my expenses. So um, I got really good at doing that. Uh, I mean, I love cards anyway, so it just kind of seemed natural to kind of be in this business. Um, but, yeah, but I did sell cards for a, a couple of dealerships back then for a few summers while I was working in college. So I had experience doing it, but uh, that was the first time I tried to create a business around it. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's an economist I know that was doing that in the early days, by the way. Yeah. He was buying and selling cars. Um, yeah. I think he started up a hedge fund after that. Uh, so there came a point where I guess you probably couldn't uh, hustle anymore. Uh, you know, on, you know, with big meatheads running at you all day. Uh, yeah. You know, there came a point where how, how's your knees? How's your knees going? Oh, oh, uh, I'm good. I mean, I've, I've been fortunate that, I mean, I, I, like as far as health wise goes, I'm uh, like completely healthy, except for like what I going mentioned, on? my eyesight getting a little blurry. What the yeah. hell is going on? You look like you're in your early, early thirties. You don't have any injuries from 45, 40. You're not going death and you're not wearing earplugs in the nightclubs. What the no. hell? That's just, just so my unfair. eyesight. That's so unfair. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just the power of, um, I think it's just the power of just constantly going out, uh, constantly gaming, constantly socializing, constantly moving in life. Um, and I think I talked about this either on my live stream last night or the night before, but uh, yeah, it's like when you stop moving in life and you start stagnating or you stay indoors too much, um, I really believe that's when, you know, you, you start to experience like little ailments from here, you know, here and there as, as far as your health goes. So yeah, it's important to just keep moving in life. Maybe, maybe just or getting laid so much was uh, it's like it's like the the youth the 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 youth serum uh, that you've been uh, sampling all your life that is keeping you young. Yeah, yeah, it's just enjoying life. I think that's the most important thing too. Is just to keep enjoying life, and I mean, even right now with all of these like all this craziness going on in society with the virus. And, you know, the police beatings and all this other stuff. I don't watch the mainstream news at all. I turn all that stuff off and I just try to focus on myself while everyone else is walking around out there angry. I just try to focus on myself and stay happy and just keep moving. Mm. And, and so when did you start up, uh, well, the, the pickup business? When, like when, when did that oh. actually start to manifest itself? And- yeah, okay. So, man, oh, I mean, if... I'm trying to gauge where we're at, you know. Okay. Mm. I mean, professionally, I mean, technically, I did start on YouTube, I want to say, as early as 2007. Um, I had a channel that I've since uh, removed the videos, but my very first channel was called Master of Pickup. So I started a channel called Master of Pickup where I just started uploading infields of myself. And um, I think the channel is still available on YouTube. There's just no videos to it. but you can see some comments and whatnot, but uh, I remember I was starting to get a good number of views, but I, at the time I, I remember I unlisted them or something because I was still kind of working in the corporate world. And uh, a a few of my colleagues had mentioned they'd seen them and I was like, Oh, okay. This might not be, you know, too good for me if I'm trying to still work at this job. So uh, I remember I unlisted that. And then um, I mean, I ended up quitting my court, corporate job anyway just a couple years later and then I went off and tried to start my own internet businesses uh I started I mean I just started a number of businesses that failed and then I 
finally just decided to return to the pickup stuff and teaching that full time. I mean, I had always done it part time, uh, but I decided to go full time, both feet in this time, and um, it got traction pretty quickly. Uh, I, I think just because I had been part of the space for so long, I had been part of these, uh, like the very first pickup artist forums that evolved, like So Suave, uh, Alt Fast Seduction was another one of the first pickup forums. I mean, this was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, so I was very aware of the space, the guys who were in it, um, what they needed help with. And I was able to target all that. That's why, you know, it wasn't really hard to launch a business from it. And lo and behold, that business became successful. Oh, okay. So in between, so in between uh, quitting football and starting it in, say, 2000, well, 2007, we got 2007, but... There's a gap yeah. there between oh, yeah, yeah. Started taking it seriously. Yeah. So in the mid nineties, like, okay, when I started going out solo, I started to meet other guys who at these clubs at venues, and I started to see a lot of the same guys there not getting success. And they would see me just totally just like picking girls up, leaving with them, making out with them. And they were like, how are you doing this? So I was able to get, to meet other guys who were willing to pay me to teach them as far back as I want to say like 96. Um, but again, it was just like a part-time thing and I didn't really even think much of it. Um, <laughs> I didn't think much of it at all because I remember back when I was in middle school, uh, everybody was a break dancer back then and uh, people were break dancing. And I remember paying a, a few kids like five or $10 to teach me some moves. And so when I was in these clubs and I had these guys willing to give me money, like 50, 75, a hundred bucks to teach, to go out with them the following night, I was like, yeah, that's great. You know, yeah. I'll fine. That's, that would be cool. And um, yeah, so I didn't, it wasn't really a business back then. It was more or less something that I was just, you know, I was just helping guys that I was constantly running into at the clubs anyway. And these guys were, you know, basically paying me to help them mm. or how to approach. Mm, yeah. And back then, I mean, approach wasn't even really a word. They would, it was basically teach me how to talk to girls. Uh, how do I get that girl? You know, da, da, da. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's, no, there's no, no code words. Um, yeah. There were, there was no uh, vocabulary yet. Glossary of terms. Um, and, and so uh, there, there's a bit of a gap between say 2007 and when you went hardcore you were doing work there. Uh, right. Also, uh, so you were going out consistently since, say, since you were 16. Like, yeah. There was no gaps? You didn't take a week off, a couple weeks off? Um, I mean, there were gaps where I would get a girlfriend uh, that I would really like. So, I mean, I can think of in particular um, probably like three gaps in the 90s where I had a girlfriend like, there were two girlfriends where we had a one year relationship and I wasn't, I stopped going out. And then uh, in the late nineties, I had a long-term relationship that like went basically five years from 1998 to about 2003, I want to say. And um, during that time I stopped, I literally stopped going clubbing and I wanted, I mean, I really liked this girl. She was super hot too. And at, at least at the time she was, um, and uh, I was trying to just move on with my life. And uh, funny enough, she was sneaking off and going clubbing and I was being left at home. And I'm like, what am I doing? Oh. You know, so this was my old blue pill self trying to make something work, even knowing that I could go out and replace her. I was I was more or less just brainwashed by the whole blue pill thinking like, OK, I've got to just stop being jealous and I've, I've got to just support her and, you know, things will work out. And uh oh. So yeah, uh, yeah. Is that when you became red pilled? Is that, is um, that yeah. I want to say yeah. That was probably a good turning point for me, just because I felt like she, you know, like we had a lot in common. She was a hot girl. She was basically what I was looking for, except for the hypergamous side of her. And back then, I mean, that wasn't even a word I understood. It was just like hey, why does my girlfriend keep like going out with her girlfriend and leaving me at home? She wouldn't do it like every weekend. It would be like maybe once every few months, she would just disappear off with her girlfriends. They would go clubbing or they would come out here to Vegas 
Um, so this is why I talk about this a lot in my coaching videos today, because turned out I wasn't the only guy experiencing that, even though at the time I felt very alone. I'm like, I remember like her taking off and going to Vegas and me staying back in San Francisco, just like, you know, I, it's like, I couldn't even like sleep. I'm like, I wonder what she's doing out there. Da, 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 you know? So yeah, that was kind of an eye opener for me. And the sad thing was, is I had pickup skill. I had the ability to go to clubs and I didn't, I like, I was waiting for her. So old blue pill mistake. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, I think that's, that's very common. That's very, yeah. Common. yeah most mm -hmm. men are, hey in that no. situation um mm, yeah uh, i can't say that for myself i've always just whenever i've had a girlfriend i've just continued <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And then, um so when you broke up with her so we're about 2003 that year correct right? yeah 2003 what, uh. what what was the ending of the relationship uh, why did it end was it an argument did someone cheat on um, the reason why it ended it was it was starting to fall apart anyway and she was starting to get uh just a little tired of my what she considered over possessiveness jealousy and i was i i admit it i was pretty jealous i i would hate it like guys were constantly checking her out and everything like that um so yeah that was just my old blue pill self mate guarding right a lot of guys who are still blue pill they tend to mate guard and uh, I was definitely doing that. And then finally, she just found another guy uh, more financially successful than I was, uh, especially at that time, because I had lost everything during this. It was uh, the stock market crash of 2000. So I basically lost everything. And um, she was just well, ready to move on. And she moved on to a guy who had his own house, his own, you know, he had his own business. And so I was like, okay, she just pretty much left me in the cold. Mm. And so yeah. that was, could we say that was uh, rock bottom? Like you kind of hit rock, rock yeah, bottom? Yeah, I, I don't know. If, yeah, it was, it was rock bottom for me. Um, you know, thinking back on that time, because I had lost everything. I had lost her. Um, I was already, I, I had just turned like 30 years old. So when you're turning 30 and you basically have nothing, you feel like you're starting over and you really feel like a loser at that point. And um, my first thought was to just start getting back out there and start meeting people again. Cause I had not gone clubbing since me and her started dating in 98. So there was this like five year lull where I wasn't doing pickup. Um, so I like around 2003, I want to say it was probably end of 2003. I just started hitting it hard all over again. I started going clubbing again. I started just meeting tons of people. Um, I met my next girlfriend at a club. Um, in Burlingame, California, and she was even prettier and younger than the girl that I had just dated. Um, and oddly enough, they kind of knew each other indirectly. So that was kind of a nice, like, uh, you know, kind of right back at her. Um, so yeah, I dated that girl for about a year. And uh, that brings us to what, 2004, 2005? No, it was about 2005, we stopped seeing each other. And um, at that point, I just wanted to keep gaming. And I was like, I don't even want a girlfriend right now. Mm. Um, so from that point on, I just started hitting it hard and uh, going, I found a new set of wingmen who are just like totally down. And by then the book, the game had already come out by Neil Strauss. So it wasn't hard to find wingmen at all during that time. There were a lot of these groups on Yahoo uh, they had something called Yahoo groups back then. And so a lot of these guys were forming uh, what were called layers. I don't know if you remember that word, layers. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I haven't heard that word in a while, right? Like, hey, where's the, net, where's the new layer? Uh, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there were tons of like layers in San Francisco and uh, Los Angeles. So I was hooking up with a lot of guys through basically these Yahoo groups. Like, hey, who wants to go out tonight? Who wants to wing? And I think just because of the popularity of that book, a lot of guys believed in the techniques. A lot of guys were willing to try them. A lot of guys wanted to go out. They wanted to be more social. Um, so that was a very good time for doing game and doing pickup. And that was, to me, that was almost like just this golden moment in time, just because social media was not that big yet. There was uh, there was Friendster and there was MySpace. And 
I remember back then during that time around from like 2005 to 2010, um, we were just going out constantly. The girls were, they just, how can I explain it, man? They were not nearly as narcissistic as they are now because of like selfie. I mean, the selfie era had not started yet. I mean, again, there was like Friendster in MySpace. So we'd go out to clubs. We we're hanging out with these girls. We we're bouncing them to different locations because that's what was said in the book to do. So we we're doing a lot of that. We we're taking lots of photos with them. A lot of them were coming back to our rooms together. Um, I mean, it was just probably the best time to do game from like 2005, 2010. And then Facebook took off, Instagram took off. The, and then, you know, basically female narcissism went through the roof. And that's where you get a lot of these 49ers nowadays where, you know, I mean, you didn't see many of those before, but they're all over the place these days. But, you know, basically four is acting like nines. Oh, that's what that means. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, so four is acting like nines. Ah, 49ers. Yeah. Ah. Uh, so uh, since then, okay. So have you had uh, obviously no sneaky marriages, no babies, no sly babies on the side? Uh, any 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 no. uh, any gossip for us? Any gossip in that area? Anything um, that you haven't shared? As, I I want to say that I was probably one of the few, if not only uh, P, like PUAs from way back in the day that did not knock up some girl. Like, you know, cause a lot of my buddies and I mean, even mystery, you know, the, like a lot of these guys ended up knocking up just random girls. Right. Uh, and then they had kids out of wedlock and now that, you know, they're basically taking care of these kids where uh, fortunately that never happened. I've always been very careful about that too. Um, so as I ventured through game and as I become like the more success I had, the more pickier I became, which was good. Um, so I've always been picky, but I became more pickier in a sense of like, if my gut was telling me not to sleep with a girl, I just wouldn't do it. I, if I felt like she slept, she slept around with like 50, 75, a hundred guys, I would just kind of back off of that. Mm. So yeah, I was more concerned about my health and I didn't want to catch anything. And, uh, so yeah, so I've been fortunate in that sense where, you know, luckily, knock on wood, no STDs, no no kids out of wedlock or anything like None that. None at all. Never, never. Not even the clap. Oh, I, I did have the clap. <laughs> <laughs> I did have the clap twice. I admit that. Okay, I did have the clap twice. Um, was yeah, it's funny. to miss the clap. <laughs> it's funny because, like, uh, in... <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't even say this. I shouldn't even tell this story. But the second time I caught it was around 2003 when I, right before I started dating my girlfriend. And the reason, the way I found out is because after we had sex, she went to her doctor and then she came back to me and she was like, hey, you gave me the, the clap. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I had the clap again, you know? And yeah, maybe, uh, so. maybe I've been holding it for like several years. It was a toilet seat. It was at the gym or something. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, yeah, know, I did catch the clap twice. I, I read an article that uh, recently, since the quarantine has kicked in, uh, chlamydia rates have decreased. So, um, oh no way! Yeah, yeah. So online that? nightclubs aren't really working so well, and obviously online dating isn't as, as efficient as what uh, guys think when they're getting on the matches. So yeah. Oh, wow. That's interesting. More, mm, more evidence that day games the way to go at the moment anyway, at the moment. Yeah. Oh, and I will say one last thing as far as STD goes, STDs go. Um, I always advise my students, and I always do this the, these days religiously, when I know it's heading towards sex with a girl, I will literally point blank ask her at some point before we have sex for the first time, have you ever had any STDs? Do you have any STDs? I will ask the girl oh. point blank. Uh, yeah, and there was this, uh, I don't know why, but like two really, really attractive girls, like the last two girls that I was, oh my God, <sighs> yeah, these girls I worked like super game on, very hot, um, both of them just back to back had STDs, um, I forgot what the other one had, but the, the last one had, uh, she had a like herpes or something like that, and um, it was like a specific oh. herpes, and I remember I Googled it. I tried to do some research and I, all I kept getting back was how contagious it is. Even if you wear condoms, you could still catch it this way. And I was like, shit. Ah. Yeah. It's, 
she was about to, uh, I had actually met her in Los Angeles and she moved back to Sweden and then she just reconnected. She like reached out to me out of nowhere and we started talking and she was like, I'm going to fly back to LA to see you. And yeah, let's do this. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. Cause I remember meeting her. I was like, this chick's super hot. And uh, before she was about to book her, her flight here, cause I knew I'm like, if she comes out here, we're going to have sex. I said, Hey, quick question. Have you ever had an STD? And then there's like this dead silence. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then she was like, um, okay, right before I left LA, I had sex with this guy and uh, I, I think he gave me herpes. I'm like, what do you mean you think? And she was like, okay, it's this specific herpes. You could Google it. So she was pretty open about it. And I Googled it. And uh, yeah, it was pretty contagious. And I was like, ah, shit. Um, yeah, I can't do it. Can't do it. Ah, uh, so well, at least it wasn't. She's laying on the bed. She mentions it, and then she, you're like, "Just wait a second. Just uh, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be back in a minute." She's like, "What are yeah. you doing over there? What are you doing? Are you ready yet?" Because <laughs> yeah, once she's in your bed or in your house or in your apartment, it's very, very hard to be like, "Oh, sorry," you know. Mm. It's very hard to do that. It's almost impossible. Mm. So when did you start, uh, I guess, running boot camps? When did you start running boot camps and uh, doing full on full, co full time coaching? We, we still haven't okay. established when that was. Yeah, um, I would say, I mean, I mean, technically, I, I could say since like the mid 90s, I mean, around 95, 96, when I started, like I mentioned, I started seeing some of the same guys in the club that were there. Mm. basically as often as I was, but we're always against the wall. Back then we used to call them wallflowers and they would just sit against the wall and kind of hold their beer up to their chest all night long. And uh, so these were the first guys that offered me money to teach them. And um, there were times, uh, many times where I would take out two or three of those guys. Like a lot of times if they were friends, they're like, okay, we're all going to pitch in and give $25 each. So 75 bucks for you to take us out and you know, so technically back in the uh, mid nineties, but it wasn't really, I didn't consider it a business or anything like that. I mean, I wasn't mm. reporting it on my taxes. I mean, it just was like, okay, I'm yeah. just meeting some guys and they just want me to help them out. So I didn't take it seriously. It wasn't probably until around 2000, uh, 2005, I want to say when, again, like the, the book, the game had come out and there were these forums and guys on these forums were way more serious about going out. And um, I was posting a lot. And basically, these guys were like, hey, where are you going to be tonight? And I'd be like, hey, we're going to be here. If you want to come out at this time, we're going to go Friday and Saturday night, two nights in a row. And this is the cost if you want to come out with me and a couple of my wings, we will take you out. So it wasn't just me running the boot camp. It was like me and a couple of my wings. And basically, they would pay us to do that. And then it I think once I started doing YouTube more seriously, that's when I was like, okay, let's, I think we can turn this into a business. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so that's pretty much been the way it's been up until now. Uh, what, what has happened over the last, say, decade? Is it, is um, it, yeah, I would, has, it I would say... blur? has it just been a blur of condoms and 3 AMs and. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, the thing, the, the thing about like when you're running your own business, it's like having a baby at home almost. Um, so I've had to figure out a way to kind of balance my business life and my social life. And it's kind of hard to separate the two at times. And yeah, so th I mean, like even like coming out here to Vegas, there's like certain times where I need to work and get things done. And then there are certain times where I just need to go out and not think about work and just do cold approach. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot more of a balancing act. Whereas when I was just working a corporate job, I didn't really care about my job that much. So I was pretty, uh, you know, I was just doing game 24 seven. Whereas these days I've had to like scale back a little bit because I have to focus on my business and I have to focus on getting students results and stuff like that, which I enjoy. I enjoy doing that. Um, so yeah, so I guess now I'm trying to be a little bit more of a responsible pickup artist, but, uh, uh, but still journey, journeying in the game. I mean, it, like you said, I mean, it's constantly changing. So you have to keep up with those changes, especially with like social media and, um, geez, like, yeah, just the culture we're living in today. It's insane. It's like super politically heated. 
Uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Mm. Yeah. So, so what, what is, uh, what is, uh, 2020 looked like for you so far? Quarantine, everything. What have you done this year? Um, I've tried to find a way to keep going out regardless of it. So I've kind of just found ways to just find cities that are still open. Like when COVID first hit, I mean, they shut down Los Angeles and then I was like, okay, I'll go back home to San Francisco. Nope. They shut that down too. So there were like very small cities that were still open in California. So I would just go out there. I was staying in hotels and like, I, I remember at one point just like early uh, when the COVID broke out around February, March of 2020, somewhere in Sacramento was open, some really like tiny town. And I just went out there just so I could keep going out and socializing. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I can't stay at home. I, I hate being indoors and just, you know, being stuck at home, but uh, I've just tried to make the most of it. And um, yeah, just not a big fan of the mass, obviously. Um, so yeah, like last night I was walking around Bellagio and a lot of the casinos. And I, I mean, I still am. Yeah, uh, I've been yeah, I've been kicked out of a few already, and <laughs> so yeah, trying to be careful about it. So, what does the the future hold for Matt Cross? What what's what what is the next next year, next five years, next ten years? Can we go that far? Um, ahead? Yeah, I would say definitely. Um, even at my age, um, I always tell guys that, you know, especially when I get haters, they're like, oh, how, how much longer can you do this pickup stuff? Just retire, just retire. And I tell them with 100% transparency, I am easily going to go another 10 years. Easily, I feel like I can easily go another 10 years. Um, and so I'm definitely going to do this for at least another decade. And um, I don't know if we if we connect again in 10 years from now, then I might have like a different plan for the next 10 years. But uh, mm. so far going forward, the next 10 years, I guess that'll put us at 2030. Um, yeah. So from 2020 to 2030, I'll still be teaching games, still be teaching pickup. Uh, still be eight. Maybe yeah. Still be getting going in it well that's that's inspirational for me because i i just started i'm i'm 40 so i was thinking that uh, you're I was, 40 i was too old to be getting into it wait you're 40 how old do you think i am i thought you were like 25 thank you sir thank you very much you're a scholar and <laughs> okay that's insane because you're talking about me not having gray hair but geez look at you man i got gray I like hair i dye it i dye really? it yes i dye it no way It'd be literally white. Oh, no. How, how much white have you gotten? Um, I, I think when I dye it, uh, so it gets into uh, the, the hair follicles and then the next batch become more gray. So okay. it's, it's like when you start dyeing the, uh, the gray out, it just accelerates the whole process, I think. So I don't know, every, every, say, two, three months, I dye it again, yeah. get a haircut. <laughs> Oh, wow. I'm getting a little bit over here, though. I forgot to mention, like, wow. on my chin, when it grows out, I get a little bit there. But uh, that, wow, man, 40? Yeah, I didn't... From my experience, they, uh, I've read articles where they say the salt and pepper works. No, from, from if I compare 100 approaches like this to 100 yeah. approaches with salt and pepper, and I've trialed it, I've tried to make the salt and pepper work. Unless okay. you want to approach grandmas, grandmas are down oh, for yeah, salt and yeah. pepper, but um, I'm not approaching grannies. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> me neither. I'm approaching girls that look up and they're like, "Oh, you can see it. They're looking in your eye, and then they do this yeah. little." Oh wow! Yeah, you can see it. And then you dye it, and you notice, boom, the results change. Hundred approaches for a hundred approaches. It's like skyrocketing. Yeah massive deal. Oh, that's insane man yeah uh, yeah i don't know i think i've just been lucky i mean some of my buddies like started balding right after high school which is oh, yeah. crazy yeah. yeah so at least we yeah. still have our hair which is good <laughs> yeah yeah no nah, yeah well um well is there anything else you want to say because i think i might wrap it up we've, we've kind of got an overview of your yeah um yeah i um I'm going to turn it on you. What's your journey in game for the next 10 years? What do you feel? Now that I know you're 40, now I got to ask you this question. Well, what are your plans for the next 10 years? Definitely come uh, do some game with Matt Cross. That's one thing that's on my, on my list, yeah. definitely. Uh, I, I wrote a book. I pumped that out this year really fast. Um, okay. 
And what is it called? The Disabled Casanova. Uh, I pumped that one out this year. Uh, and nice. well, I just started this year. So I thought that was a, a novel way to jump in because most of the guys out there, they jump in at 21 and they're six foot four and they're really handsome and that all their right. results come from a uh, caveman game. It's not really a uh, game. Yeah. So I thought I'd jump in and, and uh, I'm hoping to last at least another decade as well in here, you know? Yeah. I mean, with your, I mean, with your youth and your energy, I don't see, I don't see why not. So yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, I'm going to, straight after this, I'm going to go get a coffee and make a few approaches myself. Oh, I'm going yeah. to speak to girls. Let's not, let's not get me too. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to interact with the girls. Yeah, yeah we're going to be very careful. But yeah, thanks for coming on, Matt Cross. And for you guys at home, click the subscribe button. It's a cliche to say that. Uh, but I'll see you guys in the next video. Subscribe.